I have often said that the cult musical Hedwig and the Angry Inch is a lot like a bus. You wait ages for one production and then two come along at once. Okay, I've literally never said that. But is that what's happening right now in London? Let's discuss. Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my stage YouTube channel. If you are meeting me for the first time, hello! My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. I am a professional freelance theatre critic based here in the UK and I make videos here on YouTube where I review shows that I've been invited to go and see, I talk about news and drama and occasionally discuss theatrical gossip, much like I will be doing today. So I have been hearing some rumours, there have been some things said in interviews, and I am officially too fascinated by all of this not to come on here and talk to you about it. So we are going to discuss the possibility of Hedwig and the Angry Inch having a full London revival, but not necessarily the production that people are A. expecting, B. wanting, and C assuming it is going to be. Let's talk about this a little more. Now, if you enjoy today's video, make sure you're subscribed to my stage YouTube channel. I make content like this all the time. I have so many videos set to come out at the moment. And if you want to be one of the first people to see those videos before they are made public on my channel, then early previews of them are made available to my members only YouTube section. There is a link in the video description down below that lets you join my YouTube membership for just £2.99 or the equivalent in whatever your currency is. And that will give you access to not only early previews of my new videos, but my exclusive first impressions series where I review shows at the theatre before, in the interval, and after the show. Also lots of other fun exclusive content performances that I get to see at press events. Anything that I can, I put on there for my YouTube members. I'm so, so grateful for everyone who has supported me on that platform so far. Also, make sure you go and find me on other social media platforms. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Today's video is sponsored by Y-Food, a new smart food company that makes products that allow you to make great, healthy choices while maintaining an active lifestyle. As you know, I spend all of my time either in the theater or making videos about it. So I am literally always on the go and I'm often out around the times that you would normally be eating. So this is a really fantastic product for me. They have this ready to drink complete meal. I'm holding the crazy coconut flavor right now. What makes you crazy, Mr. Coconuts? He can't tell me, he's a beverage. But they also have classic choco and smooth vanilla, which is my favorite so far. Like I said, this is a ready to drink complete meal. It keeps you full for three to five hours. This is all based on nutritional and technological research. I know. They're also lactose and gluten free, which means my partner Aaron can have them as well. Not only that, but they also have a vegan range for the vegans amongst you. Those drinks are available in two sizes, the 500 milliliters and the 330 milliliters. But if you're looking for a lighter snack option, they also have snack bars. I literally had one of these for lunch today. Let me show you. So they sent me four flavors of these. You're about to hear so much crunchy wrapping. Salted nuts and chocolate, coconut and white chocolate, hazelnut and chocolate. They sent me a salted caramel one as well. And I have literally eaten both of the bars that I had. So I cannot show you. That was so good. Now they have been kind enough to give an exclusive discount to viewers of my videos. If you check out in the description, the discount code is Mickey-YouTube, all in capitals. And that will give you 10% off Y Food products. Now let's talk about Hedwig and the Angry Inch coming to the West End. So Hedwig and the Angry Inch first appeared off-Broadway in 1998, written by John Cameron Mitchell and Stephen Trask. John Cameron Mitchell also starred as the titular character Hedwig, who is a punk rock star who was born in US-occupied West Berlin during the Cold War, and in order to flee to America with a member of the US military, was obligated to undergo gender-affirming surgery, except for the fact that Hedwig did not do so by choice and is not necessarily a trans character in the most obvious way. John Cameron Mitchell, who has subsequently come out as non-binary, has this to say about Hedwig's gender identity. So Mitchell says, she's more than a woman or a man, she's a gender of one, and that is accidentally so beautiful. They also stated that while Hedwig is meant to be a queer voice, she is not meant to be specifically transgender. The sex change operation is not a choice, Hedwig doesn't speak for any trans community because she was mutilated. The production was adapted for 
a film in 2001, it gained this cult following, Hedvig became this queer icon with this very striking aesthetic, it has this amazing punk rock score, the whole thing is very feisty and rebellious, and it did transfer to the West End. Prior to ever playing a full-scale Broadway theatre, there was a West End production starring Michael Cerveris. Now this was at the Playhouse Theatre, which has currently been taken over by the revival of Cabaret and is now better known as the Kit Kat Club, but since this production we have not seen a major full-scale professional production here in the UK. There has been touring versions and it's been produced at the Edinburgh Fringe, but not until this past year, 2022, when it was produced by Leeds Playhouse and Home Manchester, had we seen a full production. Meanwhile, in the intervening years, Hedvig had finally made it to Broadway. There was this massive Broadway revival starring Neil Patrick Harris. It won him a Tony Award for Best Leading Actor in a Musical for his performance as Hedvig. He starred alongside Lena Hall, who drew tremendous acclaim as Yitzhak. Replacements in the role included Tay Diggs and Michael C. Hall and John Cameron Mitchell returning as Hedvig. Also Darren Chris and Andrew Rannells. It is an unmistakably iconic role and an iconic show. Now there was a lot of buzz at the time about that revival potentially coming to the West End, but for the longest time in London, while these conversations have been persisting, and I have been paying attention and even been part of those conversations online, but for the longest time in the UK, while these conversations have been persisting, there hasn't been an obvious answer as to who would star as Hedvig in a UK production of Hedvig and the Angry Inch. That is to say, who would be both talented enough, give an authentic queer performance, could sing the role, could act the role, but could also be enough of a substantial commercial box office draw to sell this relatively unknown show to UK audiences. Enter RuPaul's Drag Race UK and the phenomenally talented Davina DeCampo. So I saw this production last year at Home Manchester, and I thought it was just fantastic. It was one of my top 15 shows of the year. You can go and find out more about it in that video roundup that I did a few videos ago here on my channel, my favorite shows of the year. But I thought Davina DeCampo was astonishing and had all of the talents necessary to play the role of Hedvig with the little bit of narcissism and the ego, but the vulnerability and the shattered despair underneath. Equally stunning was Elijah Ferreira as Yitzhak. This is not a role that is nearly as showy. Yitzhak is by definition of the plot pushed to the background. Elijah was so, so great in this. The set design was fantastic and so polished and so detailed and so striking and so expensive looking that I thought surely this production has aspirations of transferring. You have this huge commercial name, Drag Race UK is really popular. I thought for certain this was finally Hedvig's chance to come to, if not the West End, then at least a London venue. Somewhere like the Soho Theatre would be perfect for this production. And yet, in the days immediately following the show's run at Home Manchester, after it had started at Leeds Playhouse, Davina DeCampo had to travel over to the US and do a drag race tour over there. Although I don't believe this actually ended up happening. I think for whatever reason, Davina wasn't able to join the tour, but in any case, Hedvig did not continue. And though I have been desperate to hear more about it, I have not heard any suggestion that this production has any plans or aspirations to come to London or have any kind of a further life. There have been rumours about Davina being attached to other shows, and I certainly don't see that production going ahead without her. So though the set may have been incredibly expensive looking, it's possible we may never see that version of Hedvig again. They had this giant teddy bear, I think? Or was it a giant gummy bear? There was something. I think it was a giant gummy bear. Find out if they've sold that gummy bear, because if that gummy bear is in storage, I'm convinced that they're not done with this production. I need to do some investigative journalism. I must track down the gummy bear. And yet, the reception for that production has spoken for itself. Not only has it been nominated for a great many BroadwayWorld.com audience awards, but Elijah also won the very coveted The Stage Debut Award. The production has also been nominated for three What's On Stage Awards. Voting for those closes today as I am sat here filming this video, so it will already have closed by the time you are watching this, and time will tell if the production goes on to win any of those awards. That would certainly help afford it a little more momentum in terms of having a future life. And yet, there may be something standing in its way, because we are finally hearing rumours, substantial rumours, that Hedvig is coming to London, but is it this version? Mm -hmm. 
So I mentioned before about the Broadway revival that Hedvig had in 2014. I call this a Broadway revival because it was a revival of the show, but it was also its Broadway premiere because the original production was an off-Broadway one. So this production that had starred Neil Patrick Harris and Lena Hall, this was produced by a commercial producer named David Binder, who after doing this show went on to work for a venue called BAM. This is a 150 year old institution, it's the Brooklyn Academy of Music, but it's more fun to just say BAM! BAM! So yesterday, David Binder, who has been the artistic director of BAM, gave an exclusive interview to the New York Times explaining that he was stepping down from the role. And as they tend to do in these things, he dropped a little bit of juicy information as well. So this article is actually a very interesting read because it talks about his predecessors in the role, each of whom spent upwards of three decades at the institution. He is leaving BAM after only a few short years. He joined as artistic director in 2019, making his tenure significantly shorter. And for much of that time, the world has been ending. So, you know, it can't have been easy. Binder, who had been producing Broadway shows as well as arts festivals before joining the institution, said he was leaving voluntarily and is planning to return to commercial producing after leading the nonprofit's artistic programming through the upheaval of the pandemic, as well as the change in the organization's executive staff. He talks more about the work that they've done, plans for the future, and then we have have this tiny little paragraph in the middle here. In the commercial arena, Binder is best known as the lead producer of Hedvig and the Angry Inch, which won the Tony Award for Best Musical Revival in 2014. Binder said that he would soon announce that Hedvig was finally coming to the West End in a big way. He's not soon announcing it, he's literally announcing it because he's just said it in a New York Times interview. So that would seem to indicate fairly substantially that it is that production, David Binder's production, that won the Tony for Best Revival, was on Broadway, will soon come to the West End in a big way. This is not the first time that this rumor has surfaced because there has been talk, there has been talk on the internet of Neil Patrick Harris and Lena Hall returning to these roles so that the production can be filmed. This is something we're seeing more and more of these days. There was a lot of talk about Beetlejuice being filmed, that there were plans to film it before the pandemic, were these plans going to resurface? And it's also not the first time we've seen something come to London specifically to be filmed, or should I say come to the UK. Much of the Broadway cast of SpongeBob came over to Plymouth to film the show. The show did not run there commercially, but it came over specifically to be filmed. The Grinch filmed over here with Matthew Morrison. Aladdin chose to film in the West End rather than on Broadway for all intents and purposes. From what I understand, it is cheaper to film a production in London than it may be in the US. So I would not be surprised if commercial producers are seeing this as an opportunity to kill two birds with one stone. Bring Hedvig over to the UK, make a lot of money with a big splashy star like Neil Patrick Harris, film the production at the same time for distribution via Netflix or Disney Plus or whoever wants to buy it. That's a separate negotiation down the line. But certainly Neil Patrick Harris would be a box office draw over here. He is currently making a little guest appearance on Doctor Who, having worked a lot with uh, British television maker Russell T Davies. I could absolutely see him doing Hedvig in the West End, admittedly almost a decade after he had played the role on Broadway. And Lena Hall is currently starring as Audrey in Little Shop of Horrors off Broadway, but has announced a final extension and will be leaving that production in early February. So potentially this is all lining up. I don't know what theater this would be going to that we have vacant, if it is this summer, if it's next year, whether it's going to be some sort of purpose-built immersive venue. We're seeing a lot of that happening in the the West End at the moment as well, so I am definitely intrigued and I will be listening very carefully to hear more about this alleged production. And I'll be waiting for David Binder to make his announcement because he's already said this much. Is he going to announce something more substantial soon? Hopefully he will. Is this the Hedvig that the West End needs, or is it the Hedvig that the West End deserves? I think certainly this would be great for London. This would be the Hedvig that the West End needs. It would make great money for the theatre and the creatives and everyone that it would bring into this production. However, is it the Hedvig we deserve? Well, not necessarily. We have this amazing regionally developed revival that was so fantastic that was put on by UK producers using UK talent, has already won awards, been nominated for more, and been nominated by its audiences, which I think makes that even more special. You have these homegrown UK stars, and I just can't help but think there's a little bit of shallowness 
in the import of a Broadway production by Broadway producers to come over here and make a ton of money and film it so you can sell it for an even bigger ton of money to a streaming service. When we have this already really beautiful and perhaps more authentically queer production, because the casting is very trans and non-binary inclusive, not that Hedvig is necessitated to be a trans role necessarily, but I do think because it speaks so profoundly and significantly to the trans community that it should be trans inclusive, it ought to be trans inclusive in its casting, and you can achieve really beautiful things like the Lee's production did, I think it would be a shame to have the Broadway one and to not see the UK one ever again. And yet, you know, we have time. Maybe there is the opportunity for both of these productions. Maybe the West End is big enough and there are enough years that one can come over and then another one can resurface a little bit down the line. I just hope that we get to see the Leeds Playhouse revival of Hedvig and the Angry Inch at some point again. I would be very excited for Neil and Lena to come over in the Broadway revival, but I do have to keep telling you how good that UK revival was in 2022. So now I would love to hear your thoughts. What do you think about Hedvig and the Angry Inch as a show? Have you seen it before? And more importantly, which of these productions would you rather see in the West End? If you had to choose one or the other, which one are you buying tickets for? Let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my stage YouTube channel for plenty more content just like this coming very soon. If there is a specific topic you want me to talk about or a specific video you would like me to make, let me know that in the comment section down below as well. And if you want even more input into the kind of videos I make here on my channel, you can click on the link in the description and you can join my YouTube members for just $2.99 a month. You'll get to have more input as to the content that I make and also get access to all of the exclusive content that I have already posted. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>